Now I'm ch now I'm checking out this video by James All All Simp James All Simp who is a bigger YouTuber of mine yet he has horrible quality because he's starting out this video and it's blurry. But hey, I'm not judging or anything. But he's talking about Sargon of Akkad versusing versusing um, Richard Spencer and stuff like that. And of course. The way he defends Richard Spencer kind of offends me a little bit. Of course, he pretty much straws Sar Sargon of Akkad and makes claims that he um, surely um, was not making. And of course, he just basically lies. Now, James Allsimp, I'm just going to call him that. James Allsimp, of course... He was accused of being a white supremacist by, of course, Ben Shapiro. Oh yeah, and check this out. He has so many high dislikes compared to likes. He really messed up on this one. But let's see what he has to say. Shapiro is a cuck. Now, that is not a description I use lightly. Ben Shapiro is a cuck. Now, that is not a description I use lightly. In the past, I've really liked Ben Shapiro quite a bit. In fact, in 2014 and into early 2015, I thought he was a really solid, great political commentator. But starting in 2016 with his extremely unfair anti-Trump coverage and the revelation that the funders of his website were also big-time Ted Cruz donors, I started to sour on Ben Shapiro just a little bit. But his website were also big-time Ted Cruz donors, I started to sour on Ben Shapiro just a little bit. But even up until just a few months ago after Charlottesville when he lied about me and called me a white supremacist on his podcast. Be part of the, the Michael Knowles show as well. That comes on at 1.30 today. I think Michael Knowles is actually having on one of the people who was uh, one of the white supremacists or alt-right people. I still listen to... All right. So this soy boy, of course, he's getting sensitive and everything. But he's talking about how he's not a white supremacist. But yet, this guy said in the past that evolution uh, dictated different IQs for races. Of course, he said that. And he kind of worships, heavily worships the Far East Asian uh, countries like Japan, which is racially high modris, high modris. Racial, just racially the same. Fuck it, I can't see. <laughs> and he does all this fuckery and stuff like that. And he did it in his latest video. And that's why his video got a lot of dislikes because he's a hypocrite. Uh, in this in this short little video here. So basically, Sargon of Akkad, for those of you who don't know, is known as an anti-SJW. He's known as... Oh yeah, and this guy has a heavy prejudice for some reason against anti-SJWs, by the way. This guy had a video called SJW Channels Are Dying Out, which I can see why he has a big prejudice against SJWs, or you can get why, which is kind of funny because if they're dying out and have more subscribers than you, then what does that say about yourself? When a zombie is more lively than a human, then what does that say about the human? So basically, Sargon of Akkad, for those of you who don't know, is known as an anti-SJW. He's known as someone who goes after the feminists, who goes after the Black Lives Matter supporters. And these people he goes after, usually, in his videos, are collectivists for some interest group. Feminists are collective. Black Lives Matter supporters are collective. They have a collective interest in their group's success and in their... All right. Now, Black Lives Matter is not really collective because if you disagree with them, then they'll call you a coon. They'll just basically trash you. And most of it is run by, I, I think, black women and gay men. So it's not really um, particularly helping out, um, you know, most the people who mostly get shot by the police that they focus on hetero black men. So they they suck as a collective. Group's position. Now, through the symmetric property, what Sargon of Akkad does is he says, if A equals B, then B equals A. So if these SJWs are collectivists, the symmetric... 
And I like how he's against symmetric properties and stuff like that. I mean, this is the same guy who says if you get high on an IQ test, then you're somehow a genius or that means anything. Same logic with if you pass a lie detector test, then you're somehow telling the truth. Just all utter bullshit. True property then dictates that B equals A and collectivists are SJWs. Now this is the... Okay, how about SJWs are collectivists? And that's a characteristic of SJWs. Not all collectivists are SJWs. Framework with which Sargon uses when debating or dismissing the alt-right Nazis. Because the alt-right to Sargon believes in the power of collectives, they equal SJWs. We see this phrase... Yes, they do. Since they believe in the power of collectivism... They equal SJWs because SJWs are all about collective. So, so yeah, they do. We're not saying that they are SJWs. We're saying that they're no better. Thrown around all over YouTube by people who think they're just very, very highly intelligent. The alt writer. Oh, okay. Well, sorry they didn't uh, do a IQ test to, in, to confirm their intelligence like you did. Right wing SJWs. Now, of course, this is naive. It's sort of autistic, in fact. It overlooked... And I like how he throws that whole autism thing. Do you know how many geniuses had autism? Come on, man. The fact that alt-right and nationalists, they oppose everything SJWs want. Mass migration, affirmative... Okay. Just because they don't oppose everything that SJWs... They might oppose everything that SJWs want. But their way of getting it is through collectivism. So they are just like SJWs or no better. Action, feminism, etc. Right? They, they may both be collectivists, but that doesn't mean they're two sides of the same coin. It doesn't mean the horseshoe theory is correct. It's this dopey horseshoe theory that says because they oppose each other, they're the same. <laughs> well, by no, because they have similarities in that they're collectivists, they are the same or no better. SJW is no better than a white nationalist, and a white nationalist is no better than the SJW. It's logic, feminists and MRAs are the same. Yes, feminists and MRAs are the same because they plead to female voters. They make a plea to female voters. Um, feminists make a plea for women to get all these special treatments, and MRA beg women i say beg women to treat them better because they will talk about gender democrats are no well they love to talk about gender but more like gender rights republicans are the same because they both talk about tax plans it's all right so democrats and the republicans they are the same as in both of them don't raise taxes but raise the debt so they are the same in that factor now, Sargon, in his debate with Richard Spencer, presents individualism as incompatible with the ethnostate. Now, the assumption that... Yes, individualism is incompatible to the ethnostate. And I would argue that if you have an all-white ethnostate, then that kind of tramples over individualism because what if a white guy has a divorce with, I don't know, a uh, brown Latina or a black woman and want his kids to live with him. But, oh, no, they live in an all-white country, so they can't have these half-breeds in there. So what are you going to do about that? And that tramples a father's individualism to have his kids. People make, including Sargon, is that the idea of an ethnostate is synonymous with full communism. It's synonymous with state control over everything. Actually, it's synonymous with... Nazis, too. It's more synonymous with socialism, since Nazis were socialists, than communism, by the way. The end of free speech, the end of private property, the ethnostate, the power of the, power of the race reigns supreme. And yeah, it might lead to the end of free speech, because a bunch of people will complain about not having their various minorities to maybe do work like maybe a high amount of foreign immigrants who may be brown 
will stop their cheap labor so they can't join in. And of course, you'll have a bunch of people who has mixed race kids who can't join this national ethno state that will speak out. So then you'll probably have riots and then the government will probably trample um, people's free speech. If you're already trampling people's free speech by having them live in it, you're already trampling people's liberty by having them live in an all white country. You're probably going to have to take property away, take assets away, divorce people, all kinds of stuff will trample freedom of speech. Individuals are, are only viewed as ants. They're only viewed as cogs in the in the success of the collective. Now, you don't even have it. It leads to that. Yes. To be a supporter of the ethno state to see that that is ridiculous, right? There are ethno states worldwide that respect individual rights. You can look. Oh, I really want to see this. Norway, you can look at Norway is not so much an ethno state. It just has a lot of white people. Why? Because it's kind of like in the middle of Europe, which is fully white. I'm pretty sure they would accept um, immigrants of all different colors and shapes. In fact, come to think about it, Norway have just accepted 300,000 immigrants from another country, particularly non-white countries such as, well, Turkey, I, I, I see that as a white country. Iraq, yeah, that can be not seen as a white country. Somalia is definitely not a white country. Neither is Pakistan, Iran. That's pretty nice. So, yeah, you talk about Norway. I mean, do, do your research. Wow, Norway is a ethno-homogenous country that just accepted 300,000 minorities. Okay. In Israel, you can look at Japan. Israel. Israel just accepted a whole... Well, Israel does accept, like, immigrants from Ethiopia a lot. Hell, they actually flew a bunch of Ethiopians to Israel. Let me show you a picture. Haven't you heard of Ethiopians in Israel, they flew a bunch of Ethiopian Jews in Israel, and they're living there. They've been living there for a while. In fact, they fly Jews all across the world to Israel uh, for some reason or another. And you can look at uh, Lithuania, Estonia. Be a supporter of the ethno state to see that that is ridiculous, right? There are ethno states worldwide that respect individual rights. You can look at Norway, you can look at Israel, you can look at Japan. You Japan? Are you kidding me? Haven't you heard of the fat tax in Japan? They actually has a tax where if you get too fat, you are, your company has to pay for you. So there's a bunch of discrimination in Japan when it comes to fat people. And they also do discrimination by blood type in Japan. This guy does no research at all. Look at Lithuania, Estonia, dozens of other countries are all effectively ethno states. They're 90 plus percent homogenous. In the case of Japan, Japan is 99.3, I believe, percent Japanese. All right. So. The Japanese wasn't even originally from Japan. They're originally from China. The people of Japan was the it was the Anu people. Um, Anu Anu people. I think that's how you pronounce it. So yeah, imperialism. Yeah, maybe it's ninety three point nine. It's it's one of the two. It's above ninety percent homogenous. So these are effectively ethno states. These oh yeah. By the way. Japan has a high suicide rate, by the way. They have a high suicide rate. They discriminate against people because of their blood type. And, I mean, just a whole bunch of stuff is going wrong. And they have a high birth, they have a low birth rate, I should say. Countries are effectively ethno states, but they still protect the rights of individuals. In Japan, everyone is not working in some matrix type cubicle and, and giving up all of their individual rights and sacrificing all of their autonomy. Actually, there's this thing in Japan where people will actually stay in their houses for like a year or two and not come out because they're so depressed. So J Japan is very depressed, by the way. And they actually had 
there was this article I read where they actually, the government actually had to set up dates because Japanese people weren't screwing like that. I mean, for the good of the state and for the good of the people. It just doesn't happen that way. Sargon's individualist argument against ethnostates isn't unique to ethnostates. The argument he's making is that individuals will have to make sacrifices for the good of the state. And that is... Yep. Just like they did in Nazi Germany. Uh, boop. Somehow unacceptable to Sargon. Of course, that argument can be used against any state. The argument that... Um, not at the extent that ethnostates would actually do. Like, for instance, if you have an ethnostate, depending on where you live at, you're probably going to have to kick out all the minorities that live in an area. You're probably going to have to end marriages where white people are marrying non-white people. And his argument sucks. It can be said by any government. Well, if you want to use that idea, then hey, uh, communism, where we take all your assets, uh, you're going to have to make sacrifices. But it can be said by any government. This guy's an idiot. State power and it's state compulsion of an individual to do something. For example, to pay taxes. That's an argument that anarcho-capitalists and, and... I mean, depending on... If you live off the grid, you don't really have to pay taxes like that. So, yeah, you can afford that. Caps voluntarists, they make against all government. This is an argument. And actually, taxes benefit you. Like, taxes pay for roads, which you use to go to work. I mean, there's, there's a lot of taxes pay for buses, which can get you around places. So what is this guy talking about? Made by anarchists against any form of government. That taxes are, are a form of violence because if I don't pay the taxes, then I am thrown in prison, for example. Well, not paying taxes is a form of violence because if you don't pay the taxes, then of course the roads will, be, will fall down and will actually deteriorate very bad. Homeless people would probably be on the streets because you'll have a bunch of senior citizens who have no family are probably kids who have who are orphans on the street. A whole bunch of things will happen if you don't pay taxes. So not paying taxes can be seen as a form of violence. Now, interestingly enough, Sargon doesn't make these arguments against the UK government or the US government. These aren't the arguments he uses against either of these governments. I think the UK government and the US government is pretty good in size. The US government can print money. Uh, and the US government is the standard uh, that all money is compared to, by the way. His complaints with the UK government, like he said in his stream with Medicare, is, is uh, ch children being taught about transgenderism, for example. Well, a real... This guy, he's complaining about transgenderism, which actually make him look like a fucking hypocrite because he was just he was just bitching about um, a child being taught transgenderism just a while ago. Health of any functioning society. Let's see if they hold themselves to the standard of protecting children and protecting their innocence and not sexualizing them because that would be bad. They definitely would not run a video glorifying a 10 year old that dresses up like a woman and dances provocatively and invitingly around adult gay men. They wouldn't glorify that child and they wouldn't glorify the mother that does this to their child, right? That would be glorifying the sexualization of children. That would be turning children into sexual objects. Mike and these leftists, see, they're better than that because sexualizing children is what creepy perverts like Roy Moore do. So they definitely wouldn't do it. Well, as it turns out, that is exactly what they do. Ironically, and this is going to take off the topic, but Roy Moore supposedly had sex with a 16-year-old, just by the way. And that's the consent age in many many um states let's take a look at this sick strange and thoroughly disturbing video from our friends over at mike but first a word from today's sponsor trade gene but for some reason this video was still able to strike a nerve with me how do you define fears to uh be beautiful be a little sassy not much and when did you first start applying looks to your face and to your body Years old. So, let me get this straight. So, when Sargon of Akkad 
of course, points out teaching transsexualism to kids. He's like, oh, man, that's not nothing. But this guy will make a video bitching and complaining about a little kid that draw that dresses up in a dress because he's a hypocrite. A real believer in the idea that state power is violence which is the argument Sargon's making, would say that public education at all is state violence because it can... No, not really. I mean, you could homeschool your children if you, um, if you actually want to. It compels people to educate their children, which they may not want to do. It compels people to pay taxes for schools, which they may not want to do. So, interestingly enough... Okay, well, you know, you can actually homeschool your children if you don't want to, and I already targeted the whole thing about not paying taxes you can live off the grid if you want personally that's what i would do want to do if i wouldn't want to pay taxes but hey and of course you can homeschool your children so you're not forced to actually put your children in public school argon doesn't make the ancap argument here it's because Sargon is tactically ANCAP. Sargon is tactically anarcho-capitalist. He's anarcho-capitalist when he needs to oppose the ethno-state. But he's a center-left liberal when talking about every other issue. It's a dis Anarcho-capitalists believe in not a government at all. They're pretty retarded. They're not... Sargon of Akkad believes in little government. Not no government at all. I actually talked to an anarcho-capitalist one day and I told him, hey, one question, in an anarcho-capitalist world, what will we do with the nukes? And he haven't got back to me with the, with the answer yet. He just froze. He, nobody never asked him that question. An ingenuous argument to make. And the last part of this saga is Sargon's realization that yes, collectivism is powerful and can be a good thing. After getting pushed around by Richard in this debate, he took to Facebook and made himself a new Facebook group. Oh yeah, by the way, he straw mans the fuck out of him. Called the Liberalists. Hmm. A group? Alright, so let me target this right now. Sargon of Akkad was against racial collectivism. And... He's not forcing people to be part of the liberalists, which sounds like a pretty kick-ass name. I'm pretty sure he's probably going to block people from uh, being part of it if they do too much of a fuss. And that's pretty much it. And any, any person of any race can be part of the liberalists, but in a ethnocentric whatever world there's only one race people pushing for their agenda isn't that kind of like a collective <laughs> it seems a no the fuck no no that's like saying uh your poker group that's like saying huh what could i say that's like saying being part of a bingo club is a collectivist group i mean it, it is, if you want to take that that way. A bit hypocritical, and that's because it is. But the argument and response that... In it's not hypocritical because he's not talking about one race of liberals, like white liberals. He's talking about just liberals of any race. Individualists and liberalists give, and that Sargon gave in his stream with Mr. Medicare, which I will link below, is that it isn't hypocritical for people to band together to advocate for their shared values. Now, well, if your shared values is race, then that's pretty much what Sargon is against. I'm pretty sure he's not uh, going up the people at water coolers and saying, hey man, your shared values of drinking water disgust me. This same justification can be made for people supporting an ethno state. If no, it cannot. For people supporting an ethno state, you do you don't have shared values. You have shared skin, and that's it. Realists want to say it isn't hypocritical for people to band together. It isn't bad for people to band together to support individualism. You could say the same thing for a group of people, a homogenous group of people, banding together to support an ethno state. No, you cannot. 
A ethno state is about race or I guess ethnicity, but when you are banding together to be part of an idea or ideas that have nothing really to do with race, that's not hypocritical, my friend. Collectives are more powerful than individuals, and by creating this group... That's like saying I can start a Nazi group because a football team exists. Like, come on, man. And deciding on a new label and a new philosophy and website for this group, Sargon is actually admitting this. Sargon is admitting the power of the collective. Sargon is admitting that the individual is not powerful against the collective. I mean, one individual with a number of people can fight another collective group. But when your collective group is because of somebody's race, not what somebody believes, then I believe that Sargon is against that. And that by organizing as a collective, you can have more power. And besides, here's how an all-white country would go. You first got the whites with straight hair, then you have the whites with frizzy hair, curly hair... Uh, fucking sometimes natted hair and they go against each other and they say oh no no you're only white if you have straight hair or blah 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 and then it just falls apart that's what's gonna happen and gain more influence and exert your will better than a group of individuals or you could have like the straight whites against the gay whites and then they kick the gay whites out and then all hell broke breaks loose the collective is a necessary condition here the funny thing is, his position is entirely self-inflicted. I wouldn't be using this critique against someone who is, for example, a Black Lives Matter supporter, right? I couldn't critique a genuine leftist with... So Black Lives Matter supporters are genuine leftists, and Black Lives Matter is against police brutality. They're not uh, collectively calling for a black country, as I believe. It's because they believe, they admit... That collectivism is a good thing. They admit that collectivism is the will to power, is the way you achieve power. Where did they, I mean, I guess more numbers is definitely better because it gets you more attention. But the Black Lives Matter is not collectivizing people by their race. All races, I have seen all races support Black Lives Matter. But Sargon is stuck in this position where he is pigeonholed himself as... Basically, to summarize his belief system, white supremacy is okay because people group up for their particular ideas. That is not because of race, but they group up anyway. So I get to have a white country. So, hey, I guess that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop it right here. Uh, I think I destroyed him. Please like, subscribe, share the video. And guys, I am out.